So today we look at laminas, the center of gravity of a lamina. First of all, what is a lamina? Okay, the definition says basically that it's a thin object and all the way through the object, the material is of the same density. And more important is the fact that it is the same thickness everywhere. Okay, so as soon as you have a lamina, it too has a center of gravity, just like the other objects that we've been working with up till this point. The only difference is now we call it a centroid because that is defined as the center of mass of a geometric object of uniform density. Okay, so these are basically going to be thin objects, same material throughout, and they're going to have distinctive shapes. Now, how to calculate that? Well, we separate the lamina into separate known shapes, and then we find the individual centroid positions of the various shapes. Now, circles, squares, and rectangles, they are obvious. Their own centroids are right at their midpoint. Triangles, however, are a little bit more complicated. So let's have a look at a, a triangle. A triangle has three heights. On this sketch, there's the one, there's the other one, and there's the third one. Now, it's easy to confuse the length of a side with the height of a triangle. They are two different things. The height of a triangle is best described by taking any one of the sides and placing an imaginary ruler, a long ruler, along there. So the ruler is lying like that, with its top edge aligned with one of the sides of the triangle. Now imagine that you take that ruler and you push it upwards, but keeping it parallel to its original position. So in other words, you don't rotate it at all. So that ruler that would have been over there is now sliding upwards and you keep going and keep going and keep going until the top edge of the ruler just is in line with the last piece of triangle that you reach. Okay, you would then have moved H2, which is one of the heights of the triangle. And you could do the same for the others. You could place a ruler over there, aligned with that edge, and you could slide it distance H3 and you would now have run out of triangle. You would have reached the last piece of triangle. And similarly, you can do that to the third side. There could be the ruler. And you would slide it distance H1, and you would be at the end of the triangle. Those three are the heights of the triangle. Now, if you take one third of any of those heights, for example, H2, let's go up, take H2, divide it by three, measure that off here, and draw a construction line across there. That line would pass through the centroid but it wouldn't tell you where the centroid was to the left or to the right. So you'd have to take one of the other sides and do the same. For instance, H3 is that long divided by three. You would get that distance there and you would then draw this blue dotted line and where it intersected the previous dotted line, that intersection would be the centroid or the center of gravity, if you prefer, of this triangular shaped object. So let's dive into an example. Here is a lamina. The dimensions are given in millimeters, 100, 175, 100, etc. And it is of the shape that you see over here. Now I've already divided it up into a triangle, a rectangle, and another rectangle. Obviously there are other ways of dividing it up, but either way it looks to be two rectangles and one triangle. Okay, so we are going to do that problem in a moment, but to illustrate how it works, you can watch the following steps where an actual object of this shape was manufactured out of a piece of thin wood and balanced on a point to find the centroid. Because remember, wherever the centroid is, let's pretend it's over there, if you were to hold this shape flat and balance it on a single point at that spot, it would be absolutely level. That would be the centroid. First step was to draw the shape in CAD, print it out full size. It's only an A4 printer, so I had to use two pieces of paper. And then I glued the two pieces of paper together to show the shape of the lamina. Then I glued that shape to a piece of plywood. And then I cut it out with a jigsaw. There's the shape. 
The thickness of this lamina happens to be six and a bit millimeters. And just some of the other dimensions, just to show that it is indeed the size as given. And then finally, to try and find the balance point, which of course is the centroid. I'm trying to balance this shape on a sharp object. It takes a little bit of time. Move it left, right, backwards, forwards, etc. until it actually balances. Let's see how long that takes. There we go, it's balancing. Where is that point? Well, I had to turn it over and make a mark to show where this balance point was. And finally, to show you the dimensions of that balance point or the centroid from each of the edges, there's the one dimension, there's the other dimension. So let's continue with that problem, doing the calculation. As we said before, we're going to split it up into two rectangles. There they are, and the triangle. The first thing is to determine the centroid of each piece. So rectangle one would have its centroid at its midpoint. Rectangle two also at its midpoint. And then the triangle, remember one third of the height. Now in this case, the height, one of the heights would be the distance from this line right the way across to that point, which is 130. One third of 130 would give us the 43.33 millimeters from here to the centroid. Okay, if you were to add the 43.3 to the 150, you could put in this dimension. So once again, a large sketch with clear dimensions is vital. And then we're also gonna be working out the centroid from this lower face upwards. So we need that dimension that dimension and this dimension as well. Okay, next thing is to use or to calculate the areas of each piece. Remember that in the very first example, we used weight when we were working with a three dimensional object. And then if it was consistent density, we canceled out the density and we were working with volume. We can go right down to just using areas in each case. Okay, so the first area of number one is a rectangle. There it is. Obviously the units are square meters because we are talking area now. The second one, which is also a rectangle, there's its dimensions. And units square meters, 15 times 10 to the minus 3. Finally, the triangle, half times base times height, would give you the area of a triangle. And you can add up the whole lot and get 29 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Right now for our statement where we take total area times the distance x, bar x, which is the distance from our reference edge across to wherever the centroid is going to be. We're talking from left to right. And that is equal to area 1 times the distance from the reference edge to its centroid. In other words, from this reference edge to the centroid of the first one. Remember that is 50 millimeters. Second one, 75 millimeters. Make sure that you can see where that is. From the reference edge across to the centroid would be 75 millimeters, half of 150. Finally, the triangle from the reference edge across to its centroid would be, as I said moments ago, 193.3. Okay, now you plug that all in and you find the distance from the left reference edge, that's this one here, across to the centroid is 0 0.09505 meters or 95.05 millimeters. And remember that checks, cross checks with the experiment that we did with a piece of plywood. Next is to work from this reference edge and work from bottom upwards using the identical areas, the same three areas, but in this case multiplying by the distance from the lower edge to each respective centroid. There's the first one, 137.5, then the next one, and the next one. And you'll see that this dimension agrees with the little experiment. That we now for interest sake, let's see how we could work out the mass of this lamina. So here's the question, how would you find the mass if the density were say 680 kilograms per cubic meter? Now incidentally that is a valid figure for plywood. If you go onto Google and you see the density of plywood, you'll probably get a figure about there. So let's use that and see how we go. And the thickness you saw with the vernier, it measured 6.3 odd millimeters. Let's leave it at six millimeters and see what we get. Okay, so let's try and work out the mass of the object. 
Now remember from our previous table, we already have the area of the three pieces. And if you take each area and you multiply it by the thickness, you would immediately have volume. So 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3 square meters multiplied by 6 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, the thickness, would give us 45 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters. That is the volume of piece 1. Same for 2 and 3. So the total volume of our lamina, the one I held in my hand, made of plywood, 174 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters. Now remember, mass is density times volume. Mass is density times volume. So there's our density. There's our volume from above. Plug it in, 0.11832 kilograms or 118 and a bit grams. And just to confirm, there's the plywood on a scale, 120 grams. Right, here are two more examples for you to try yourselves. Here's the first one, which is also a lamina. And that lamina has two cutouts. One is triangular in shape. This piece is missing. And this is circular in shape. It's also missing. One missing dimension on the drawing is the height of this circle. Let's take it to be 250 millimeters from the lower edge. Okay, so now the way to handle that is exactly like the previous example. Treat it as four pieces. You'll see I've got piece one, piece two. Those are both present. And then I've left the absent ones, three and four, to last. And the way to handle it is pretend in your calculation that they are all present. And all you do for the two missing pieces, that being three and four, you put a negative sign in the calculation to indicate that they are absent. Okay, so when you work out areas, and I want you to do this yourself, you're going to have area one and two as normal positive numbers. And three, you place a negative sign, and four, you place a negative sign, which will give you the correct area. And that's all you really have to do, other than also ensure that this is negative and this is negative, to remove the effect of those cutouts. And you're going to get your two answers for bar X and bar Y. So give that a go. The next one is similar. It is this shape here, a lamina, with a hole, a missing piece, diameter 40. All the dimensions are given. And in this one, they also ask you to work out the mass. Also determine the mass. There it is. And they tell you it's three millimeters thick and a typical steel density of 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so work through that. Practice those two extra ones. And we'll talk again.